relax. Wherever you are, however you are. <clears throat> Allow yourself just to settle down, relax. We could say there are two things you have to do. One is to relax, settle down. Allow the mind to become calmer, more relaxed. If you can call that a doing. It's more of a stopping, or some people say letting go, or surrender. The other thing you have to do. I mean, the first, the first task can be quite difficult at times. Sometimes it's easier at a meeting like this. The second task is to stay awake. It doesn't seem like much of a teaching. But it's an essential part of the teaching. Some people, the mind is busy, busy, busy. Active, active, active. Grasping, seeking, darting here, darting there. This is the rajasic mind, the active, passionate mind. This kind of mind distorts, distorts the reality, apparently. Not really, but apparently seems to. Even the Rajasic mind is no match for reality. Reality, what is, it always is, it constantly shines through as all in all. But the rajasic mind, the active mind, it distorts. It seemingly veils reality, what you are. It keeps you seeking. And for some people, when that mind starts to become still, 
it just switches off and goes to sleep. It's like it has two settings. The first setting is on, 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 plus, plus, plus. And the next setting is off, or zero. Minus zero. Zero minus minus. <laughs> Don't tell me I'm on mathematically dodgy ground here. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Zero minus, minus zero. I know what I'm talking about. And it goes to sleep. It goes zonk. Off, sleep. The mind that's overstimulated, hyperstimulated. Or just, you know, sometimes when it first they, um, tastes calm, it switches off, goes to sleep. The body needs rest. The, body, the mind needs rest. So as soon as it gets a chance to have rest, it switches off. If that happens, let that happen. Let yourself sleep. You probably need the sleep. But over time, not very much time as well, if you apply yourself. to this kind of doing, which is actually not a doing. But it's more of a being, being what you are. Eventually you're at the body mind, as it were, achieves an equilibrium, an alertness, an aliveness, a vividness pervades the consciousness. Here we are on, but maybe just one plus. We're awake, but the thoughts aren't. The thoughts aren't king. The thoughts are no longer guiding us, ruling us, distorting us. We're no longer taking ourselves to be the thoughts. We're beyond body, mind, world. Objects, phenomenal arisings, my. Suddenly we have found ourselves beyond everything and one with everything. Like the movie in the screen. It is no longer you are doing the practice. It's more be being, being is. And everything is this being. So here we can start to say that this is the dawning of self-knowledge, self-realization. It's not really a knowledge or a realization. It's a, there's a re revelation or a revealing of what was always true. What what always is and what is always known. Always known. It's revealed seemingly as the 
the is it the Red Sea? The Red Sea of Thoughts parts. And the truth is revealed. And then the thoughts keep on coming back. Daily life comes along again. The thoughts come back. The rajasic mind, the passionate mind, the suffering mind comes back and our attention is diverted. So we keep on coming back. We keep on coming back to this non-practice of letting go and being. Coming back to what we are. We keep on exposing the body mind to the teachings through reading, through coming to satsang, through engaging in this practice of being. And this knowledge dawns. Spontaneously, we find ourselves seeking, wanting to hear the teachings. So we hear the teachings somehow, which includes reading. And we hear the teachings and then we spontaneously find ourselves thinking about the teachings. And we hear the teachings again, and we think about the teachings again. Shravana manana, shravana manana. Shravana is hearing the teachings, manana is thinking about the teachings. Spontaneously this happens. And then, at some point, we start to put the teachings into practice, spontaneously. We feel the desire to be still. This is called nididhyasana in Sanskrit, meditation. Abiding is the self, being still. Shravana, manana, nididhyasana all happen spontaneously. They all work together. And as the mind finally it starts to attain this calm, this peace, this silence, getting closer to what it is. When it starts to become when it starts to become quieter in a sustained way. It means the habitual disturbances stop arising so frequently. It becomes established in this silence. This is known as samadhi. All the great traditions prescribe deep stillness of mind, samadhi, for good reason. And this knowledge that is always in our hearts starts to blossom and bloom. Samadhi is another name for our true nature, that, that which we always are. That which always is. It is the only thing we know for sure. Everything else is here, so. Conjecture. 
circumstantial evidence at best. There's one thing that we need, which is the I am, I am, the beingness, the presence that we are, the isness that we are. So the teaching encourages us just to be with that, be that which we are. And just through that very simple thing, everything is revealed. But without that simple thing, nothing is revealed. Nothing is revealed. It might seem that lots of things are revealed. You might have lots of insights and intuitions and realizations of some kind, genuine, genuine realization. But they will all remain, remain superficial until the mind is made quiet. This is not a matter of theory. You can test this. You can see, is this true? For yourself. Maybe we'll talk about why the mind is active, the root causes of that in this meeting. I don't feel like going into it right now for some reason. I think I'm speaking enough. I think I'm saying enough for me. Maybe we can, maybe somebody will ask a question about that. I don't know. Okay, well, let's have another couple of minutes of quietness and then um, we'll see if anyone wants any, to ask any questions. 